In this video, we're going to look at A means. So on the board, I've got I've got three models of A means, and we've also got a familiar molecule here. This is ammonia, and hopefully you can see straight away there's a lot of similarities between the ammonia molecule and these organic molecules. So we'll start with the simplest amine, this one here. This is called methyl amine, and this is what we call a primary amine, and that's because the NH2 group, or the nitrogen, is bonded to one carbon directly. And as a result of that, the nitrogen has two hydrogens on it as well. This amine here, you can see the nitrogen is bonded to two carbons directly, and so therefore this is a secondary amine. And as a result, we've only got one hydrogen on the nitrogen. This is called dimethyl amine. The final amine in the corner here, this is a tertiary amine. And you can see there are three carbons directly bonded to the nitrogen. And as a result, there are no hydrogens bonded to this nitrogen. And this is called trimethyl amine. There's a couple of aromatic amines. And you've probably heard of both of these. If you're a Breaking Bad fan, you'll have definitely heard of the one on the right. So we've got amphetamine here on the left. And you can see all I've done in this molecule is I've replaced one of these hydrogens for a methyl group. That's a methyl group there. So this is called methamphetamine. So what class of amines do these belong to? Well, the nitrogen here is bonded to just this carbon directly. So this is a primary amine. And this nitrogen here is bonded to this carbon, this methyl group here. And there's another carbon there. So this is a secondary amine. We'll take a look at the base properties of amines now. You can see on the left hand side of the board, I've got the, the stuff that we needed to know at AS about ammonia. So ammonia is a base. Remember, it's got a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. I've represented them by that pair of dots there on the model. So the lone pair of electrons can accept a proton from an acid and form a dative covalent bond or a coordinate bond. And the product of that is the ammonium ion. So this is a dot and cross diagram here of an ammonium ion. So if we move over to the right hand side, you can see direct similarity between the amine and ammonia. So the only difference is that we've got a methyl group here instead of a hydrogen. So because we've still got that nitrogen with the lone pair on it, it can do exactly the same thing. So it's going to accept the proton from the acid going to form a date of covalent bond or coordinate bond and form an ammonium ion but in this case the ammonium ion is called the methyl ammonium ion. So we'll take this a step further now and react an amine with an acid. So we've got hydrochloric acid on the board there and this is ethyl amine with two carbons and so we're going to get a salt because amines are bases, weak bases, and bases react with acids to form salts. So what's going to happen? Well, the amine, the lone pair on the nitrogen, is going to accept this H+, and it's going to form the corresponding ammonium ion, which is going to be CH3, CH2, NH3+. So that's the ammonium ion, and what's left of the acid will be a chloride ion, and so we'll form this salt here. That's the salt. And this is going to be called ethyl ammonium chloride. If you remember, the definition of a salt is when the H plus of an acid is replaced by either a metal ion or an ammonium ion. Well, we've got the latter here. We form the ammonium ion, and then that is then replaced effectively that H plus ion there in the acid. We look at an aromatic amine now. So we've got phenyl amine, and we're reacting that with nitric acid. Exactly the same thing is going to happen. 
the H plus from the acid is going to end up on here and form an ammonium ion. So we'll draw that up now. So it's going to be NH3 plus. And what's left of the acid is the NO3 minus ion. So there's your salt. So we've got phenyl ammonium nitrate. We'll look at this one now. We've got propylamine, so with three carbons, and sulfuric acid. Now you'll notice now we've got two H plus ions to donate, but the amine can only accept one proton, and so therefore we're going to need two of these. So we're going to get the ammonium ion CH3, CH2, CH2, NH3+, plus, but we're going to have two of those, and that will be able to bond with the sulfate ion from the salt. So we're going to get this salt here, and it's going to be called propyl ammonium sulfate. And obviously to balance that equation, we need two moles of the amine. So we'll take a look at how to prepare amines now, and we'll start by looking at how to make primary aliphatic amines. So remember, primary amines are when you have the nitrogen directly bonded to one carbon only. Aliphatic is just a straightforward carbon chain, i.e. not an aromatic compound, so there's no benzene rings in this. So how would you make this primary aliphatic amine, which is called ethyl amine? Well, what you would do is you would take a corresponding halogenoalkane, so you could use chloroethane, and you would react that with an excess of ammonia. So I've drawn up there the displayed formulae for the halogenoalkane and the ammonia molecule and put the lone pair on the nitrogen of the ammonia and we'll put the dipole in this bond. Remember chlorine is quite an electronegative atom so that will be slightly negative and this carbon will be slightly positive. So you can see that this lone pair is going to be attracted to that carbon and that will break that covalent bond by heterolytic fission. That would produce this intermediate. It's quite unstable, and so to stabilize itself, it's going to involve this pair of electrons in one of these NH bonds going back onto the nitrogen and effectively breaking this bond. And so this H would come off as H plus and combine with the Cl minus and form the HCl. And you can see what's left of this would be CH3, CH2. NH2, i.e. the amine that we're trying to make. So we've just made the amine, but let's suppose that the halogenoalkane was in excess. So in other words, there's lots of these molecules in the reaction vessel, and hopefully you can see what's going to happen. This is very similar to an ammonia molecule, and so we're going to get attack from the lone pair on the nitrogen onto this slightly positive carbon atom here, and we're going to get the same thing happening. So we're obviously going to get a further substitution taking place, whereby we produce the secondary amine, which is not what we wanted. We wanted a primary aliphatic amine, not a secondary aliphatic amine, and so therefore we've kind of defeated the object. We'll follow this through to the end there. So imagine the halogenoalkane is still in excess. There's still a lot of it there. Obviously, this has still got a lone pair at this nitrogen, and so therefore it's going to be attracted to that carbon, break that bond, and we'll end up with the tri-substituted amine. In other words, we'll end up with a tertiary amine. So obviously to prevent that from happening, 
we don't want there to be more halogenoalkane than ammonia and so the excess compound is the ammonia. So we'll look at how to make primary aromatic amines now. So that is an amine with one carbon directly attached to the nitrogen, that's the primary part. And aromatic obviously contains a benzene ring. So the simplest one of these is phenylamine. So that's an NH2 group directly bonded to the benzene ring. So how do you make something like this? You would take the corresponding nitroarene. So obviously in this case, that is nitrobenzene. And you would reduce it with a reducing agent made from tin and concentrated hydrochloric acid. Now in the equation we would just represent the reducing agent as an H in square brackets. So we need to turn this into phenylamine. And if you think about we've got two O's there so we're going to make the other product we're going to make two moles of water. So we have a count up of the hydrogens, we've got four, five, six. So in this equation, for every NO2 group that is reduced, you need six moles of the reducing agent. So six H in square brackets. So obviously if there were two NO2 groups on the molecule, we would need 12 there. We would reduce both of the NO2s to NH2s and we make four waters. We've drawn the conditions up on the arrow as well. So we have a tin concentrated hydrochloric acid reducing agent and the reaction is carried out under reflux heating.